Okay, one last question. Yeah. Um, obviously, God has entrusted us with a lot, and mm. you and Nancy put your money where your mouth was long ago, and with EPM, y'all have been mega donors to the seed company, passionate about multiple scripture translations. Uh, something I believe, and you and I have talked about this before, is that um, when you look at 1 Corinthians 12, Romans 12, um, spiritual gifts, um, the gospel is generosity. We've established that this weekend, and there's a direct correlation, it seems, oftentimes. Certainly, Jesus commended the widow and the two, her, her giving of the two mites. That was radical generosity. It was all she had. But in this world, this, this physical world, there's a direct correlation, it seems, between oftentimes those God gives the gift of giving to and those people who have the ability to generate great wealth. And First Chronicles talks about, uh, you know, everything we have is from the Lord and, and the privilege it is to steward what God has given us. Talk a little bit about that correlation. Well, historically, you can go to certain times in history, and it appears that God has raised up certain spiritual gifts. Um, you know, uh, there's four major gifts passages. One of them is Romans 12. And there's the gift of teaching, and there's the gift of leadership, and there's the gift of mercy or service or helps. We're pretty familiar with those. But right in there, one of those is the gift of giving. And that one kind of gets passed over. People know what the gift of teaching looks like. They know what the gift of mercy looks like. There, there have been times in history during the plagues where God has seemingly supernaturally gifted a large, a disproportionate number of people with the gift of mercy to give nursing care, to, to, to uh, risk one's own uh, life and physical health in, in service of people dying. And the church in the days of the plagues would deal with people and put their hands on people they might die from to help them because the church had a vision that you know, that went beyond. And I think God knows what every era needs. And he always gives, when he gives a gift to someone, he always gives the corresponding resources and abilities to exercise that gift. Doesn't that make sense? So if he, call, if he gives someone the gift of teaching, he gives them a logical mind, he gives them an ability to communicate, and of course, you develop it as you go. Well, what do you think... That God, what gift would you expect that God might raise up in a generation that realistically for the first time has the ability to reach the uttermost parts of the earth with the word of God in the language of all people? What, what gift might he raise up? Well, the gift of giving would make a lot of sense and what might he give many of those people who have the gift of giving? And the answer to that would be vast resources because that's what you could use to most impactfully exercise your gift. So I think one of the things that we should think in terms of is why has God entrusted all this to me? I heard Warren Buffett ask that question when he was with Bill Gates and the two of them are just bubbling like little kids. And Warren Buffett looks into the camera and says, all those years I wondered, why was I making all those billions of dollars? He says, and I finally discovered the reason. It's so I could give it away. And here, but what struck me is, this is not somebody that knows Christ as far as I know. I don't have any evidence of that. Uh, but this is not somebody that knows Jesus. He's just somebody who, by the common grace of God, has discovered the truth. There's great happiness and joy in giving. And then I look and I say, do all the Christians, all of us who have been entrusted with such great wealth, do we understand that? Because we not only can find happiness in it, we can find eternal purpose in it. God has raised up all of these funds, so why so we can reach the world and get the Bible translated in all of these languages so that we can make a difference for all eternity. And let me just finish with this one last comment. And Todd didn't ask me to say this or any of this. I notice he hasn't stopped me, but he didn't ask me to. Um, but but let, me just, let me just say this. Stop, if please. You, 
I mean, yeah. yeah. Let me just say this. If you think in terms of this world and what this world needs, doesn't it just make absolute sense to you that God has granted to you the resources he has, knowing they belong to him, and has called you to step up and say, I didn't even know I had the gift of giving. Well, of course, we're all called upon to give, whether we have the gift or not. We're all called upon to show mercy, whether we have the gift of mercy or not. I don't even know if I have one. But you know what? You'll get the joy anyway. But what you will discover, there are many, many people who never had a clue they had the gift of giving until they started giving and their life was infused with a joy beyond imagination. And I've had people tell me, our kids look at us and they think we're crazy. We're giving away all this money all over the world. We're doing these things. We're not, you know, we liquidated a couple of our houses. We did this, we did that. And we've never been happier. So I would just say, give God the opportunity to show you whether or not you have the gift of giving. Whether or not you do, you're still called to give and to give generously. That's true of all believers. But what a thrill to discover a spiritual gift that you maybe never even thought about. And it's maybe been dormant in some of our lives. And when it explodes, it explodes. And the joy is, is beyond compare.